I've done row 41. This is how my work looks so far. Now I will start with row 42. We work the first four stitches as they appear and then we continue to knit until we reach the last four stitches. My last four stitches on row 42, I will work them as they appear. Knit, purl, knit, purl. Now we are working row 43 and on this row we also work another buttonhole but first work the four first four stitches as they appear this is the edge and then continue to purl until you reach the last four stitches my last four stitches on row 43 let's work another buttonhole so knit one yarn over knit two stitches together and purl the last stitch So now we have four buttonholes. So this was uh, the buttonhole number four. Next, we will work in stockinette stitch. the next six rows so work in stockinette stitch row 44 45 46 47 48 and 49 after I will complete row 49. I will come back and explain and show the next step. Of my tutorial. I've done row 49. Now on row 50, we will work in a rib one by one all the row. So I've started with knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, this 
this is what we are working on row 50. Knit purl, knit purl until the end of the row. I will meet you at my last four stitches. My last four stitches, I continue to knit, purl, knit, and end the row with a purl stitch. Until now, my work measure 15 centimeters long so this was row 50 on row 51 we continue to work in rib one by one until the end of the row so follow the stitches, work the stitches as they appear. This part with uh, one by one ribbing that we are making now, it's like a border for the next part of this uh, garment is what separate um, the two parts of this romper. I will come back once I have my row 51 complete. Row 51 is complete. Now I will take back the other needles, <clears throat> uh, the 16 inches long uh, circular needles or 40 centimeters because on the next row, we are joining in round. But first, this is row 52. We also work in one by one rib until we reach the last four stitches. So I will meet you once I reach my four last four stitches. So these are my last four stitches. And these are my first four stitches. Now we are joining in round. This is the part where we have the button holes. This part needs to be up and this part down so we place like this with the bottom holes up and we continue to work this is a pearl stitch my last stitch then my next stitch needs to be a knit stitch but I am knitting both of the stitches together from each needle. So I am inserting in the first and in the next on my next needle and knit them together. Now I can drop the stitches from my needles. My next stitch needs to be a purl stitch so i am taking first the back stitch from the the second needle and then the first stitch 
from the first needle and purl them together. And this practically is my end of the row and I will place a marker here and normally now I am starting a new row so my first stitch needs to be a knit stitch and once again I am taking both of the stitches together like this one two and I will knit them together now I can drop them from my needles my next stitch needs to be a purl stitch so I am taking first the stitch on the second needle the stitch from the first needle and purl them together now I can leave aside my other needles and I will continue to work in rib one by one until the end of my row. So continue this is the a row 53 that we are working right now after we join in round <clears throat> this is row 53 so continue to work until you reach the end of the row before the marker. Row 53 is complete. I still have yarn uh, from my uh, first ball, the ball uh, from the beginning of the tutorial. Now I will slip the marker and on row 54 we are also working in one by one rib. Okay, so continue to work in one by one ribbing also on this row 54 and I will meet you once I have complete row 54 my row 54 is complete I wanted to show you how the the work looks so far now we are working row uh, 55 on row 55 we are knitting all the stitches but at the same time we will increase so if you count your stitches now you need to have 19 96 stitches and because this part of the romper we will work in bubble a pattern we need to have multiple of six stitches we have right now with 96 stitches we have multiple of six stitches but I want this part this uh, part which is the bloomer part let's say to be a little just a little bit wide from the rest of the body only because the baby is wearing diaper and I don't want to fit a very stretch a very to be slim sorry 
So I am increasing another six stitches. I want to have 102 stitches. So uh, how do you know um, how to increase where? We divide 19 six stitches at six stitches that we need so uh, we will increase on every 16 stitch so I am working 15 stitches one in knit stitch two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and this is uh, stitch sixteen. And here I will increase by knitting back and forth the stitch. So I have increased one stitch. Now let's continue to work in knit stitch another 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15 and in this stitch I will increase working this stitch back and forth. Now I have two stitches. Um, I still need four stitches to reach my 102 stitches. So I will continue again. I will need 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and in the 16th stitch I will make an increase by knitting the stitch back and forth. Now I have three stitches that I've increased so far. Let's continue. Another 15 stitches in knit stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and in the 16th stitch I am increasing by knitting the stitch back and forth. Now I have four stitches increase. I still need two more so continue to work in knit stitch the next 15 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and in the sixteenth stitch I will increase. Now you can count the remaining stitches two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. I have seventeen, sorry I think I just just a second so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 15 and this is the 16th stitch that I am increasing okay so now I have five stitches and I need to increase one more time let's work another 15 stitches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and 
13, 14, 15 and in the last stitch we are making the last increase. And now we have 102 stitches. And this was row 55. Uh, as you could see, uh, we've, we've made the increases only in the purl stitches. Okay. Now we will start to work the first row uh, of bubbles. We are about to start row 56 which will be a bubble row. Before you start this row, please count again your stitches and make sure you have 102 stitches. If not, work another knit row and try to adjust the stitches, increase uh, the stitches uh, you are missing now. And on row 56, we are starting like this. First, we need five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. In the next stitch, we are making a bubble exactly how we've worked for the sleeve. So in the next stitch, I am knitting back and forth five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. Now I am turning my work and I will purl these five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. Now I turn the work again and I will knit these five stitches together through the back of the stitches. And because I don't have the right needles, the first bubble will be a mess. Okay. Now pull tight this stitch and push the bubble in the front. Next, knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. In the next stitch, we are making again a bubble. First, we knit back and forth five times this stitch. Now we turn the work and we purl these five stitches. Now we turn the work and knit these five stitches together through the back. Now pull tight, push the bubble in the front. Next, knit five stitches, one, two, three, four, five. And this is what we repeat on row 56. Knit five, make a bubble in the next stitch, knit five, make a bubble. I will make another bubble with you. So knit five stitches back and forth 
in the next stitch. Then turn the work, purl these five stitches. Turn the work. Now knit these five stitches together through the back. Fold tight and knit the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And so you continue to work a row 56. As you can see, between two bubbles, we have five knit stitches. Okay, so here I have a knit five stitches. In the next stitch, I will make a bubble. And I will come back once I reach my last stitch on row 56. I'm at my last stitch on row 56. I've made five knit stitches. And now I need to make a bubble in the last stitch of the row 56. So I am working back and forth this last stitch five times. I will turn the work and now I need to purl these five stitches. Uh, you can purl these stitches a little bit loose, loosely. It will be easier for you when you turn the work like this and work them together through the back. It's more easier if you are purling a little bit loosely. Now I pull tight my stitch, slip the marker, and I am starting to work row 57. And on row 57, we need to knit all the stitches. The only difference is that when we reach the bubble stitch, we lift this loop and work together with the bubble stitch, like this. You can count, so knit five, and I reach the bubble stitch, I lift this loop, and work together with the bubble stitch. I am making this not because uh, I want to make sure that the bubble uh, is uh, sitting on my front side of work, but also if I am not doing this, I will have a gap here before the uh, stitch uh, with the bubble. I will have a hole here and I don't want that. So on row 57, we are knitting every stitch and what each time we reach the bubble, we lift that loop and work together with the stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, my bubble, lift this loop and work together with the bubble stitch and so on. Again, knit five, two, three, four, five. I've reached my bubble and I lift that loop and work together with my bubble stitch. So I will come back once I reach my last stitch on this row, row 50, seven. My last stitch on row 57 is the bubble stitch. So I am uh, taking that loop and knit together with my stitch. 
It is important to count between the bubbles when knitting to have five stitches in case you have less stitches. You have four, for example. It means that you have worked one of those five stitches together with the stitches for the bubble. So you can repair on this row if you are missing uh, one stitch. Now, on row 58, actually the next four rows, we are only knitting. So, uh, a row 58, 59, 60 and 61, we are just knitting in round every stitch on every row. So, knit on row 58, this is row 58, 59, 60, 61, and I will come back to work with you row 62. I've done row 61. Now we are going to start row 62. And row 62 is a bubble row. So I am slipping my marker and on row 62 we work like this. First, knit two stitches. In the next stitch we are making a bubble. So knit in the same stitch back and forth five stitches. Turn the work. Now purl these five stitches. Try to make it uh, loosely. Now turn the work and knit together through the back these five stitches. Pull tight the new stitch and push the bubble in the front. Next, knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. In the next stitch, we are making another bubble. So knit back and forth in this stitch for five times, two, three, four, five. Turn the work, purl loosely these five stitches. Turn the work, now knit together through the back these five stitches. Make sure to have five and uh, to not pick uh, another stitch. Again, knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. In the next bubble, in the next stitch, we are making another bubble. One, two, three, four, five stitches in the next stitch. Turn the work, purl these five stitches. Now knit these five stitches together through the back loop. Pull 
all tied and knit the next five stitches one two three four five in the next stitch we are making a bubble continue like this knit five make a bubble knit five make a bubble until you reach your last four stitches i am at my last four stitches in the meantime i attach a new ball of yarn on this row so now I am working the second ball of yarn so the last four stitches I have five knit stitches here now I need to make a bubble Turn the work, purl these five stitches, turn the work, knit together through the back these five stitches, and then knit the last the last three stitches. So we started the row with two knit stitches, we end the row with three knit stitches. So again, we have five stitches between two bubbles. And this was row 62. On row 63, we are knitting every stitch. And when we reach the bubble stitch, don't forget to take this loop and knit together with the bubble stitch. It is important so we don't need, you see here on the previous round of bubbles, we don't have gaps here. So it is important plus the bubble is fixed as you can see on the front side of your work so on row 53 we are again it is important to count the stitches be between the bubbles in case you um, have four stitches let's say uh, between two bubbles uh, you can fix on this row you can increase one stitch if you need in case you've worked uh, one stitch together with the stitches for the bubble so I have one two three four five I reached my bubble I am taking this loop and knit together with my stitch and again, I am counting five. Again, I am taking this loop and knit together with my stitch. And this is how you work row 53. I have completed row 63 I hope uh, before I didn't say 53 this is row 63 now um, we need to work four more rows in knit stitch so rows 64 65 66 and 67 we are just knitting in round every stitch and I will come back once I have um, complete row 67 to work with you 
the next step. I completed row 67. Now we are starting row 68, which is a bubble row. So I slip the marker and we are starting row 68 this way. First, knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. In the next stitch, we are making a bubble by knitting back and forth in the same stitch five times. Now turn the work and purl loosely these five stitches. Turn the work again and knit these five stitches together through the back loop. Pull tight and push the bubble in the front. And this is what we will gonna uh, to repeat on row 68. Knit five, one, two, three, four, five. Make bubble in the next stitch. So I am knitting five stitches back and forth in the same stitch. I turn my work. Now I will purl loosely these five stitches. Now knit these five stitches together through the back, pull tight and repeat. Knit five. And in the next stitch you make a bubble and this is what you repeat on row 68 I will come back once I reach my last stitch on row 68 this row my last stitch on row 68 and in this last stitch we are making the last bubble for this row So I've made five stitches in one stitch. I am turn my work, turning my work and purl loosely my five stitches. Turn the work again and knit together through the back these five stitches. Slip the marker. And we are starting row 69, which is a knit row. And remember that we need to pick up the loop before the bubble. So uh, this way we are uh, avoiding gaps in our work. So row 69, knit until you reach the bubble lift this uh, loop and knit together with the bubble stitch and also um, check out your stitches between two bubbles you need to have five knit stitches so you can count like this one two three four five and my next stitch is the bubble stitch so continue to work row 69 like this and then row 70, 71, 72 and 73 we are also knitting in round. 
and I will come back once I will complete row 73. Okay guys, so I've done row 73 and we are about to start row 74 which is a bubble row and uh, as you can see for the moment we have three rows of bubbles one two three I consider one repeat when I make two rows of bubbles so one row of bubbles five rows in stockinette stitch another row of bubbles and five rows in stockinette stitch is a, a repeat for me and now as you can see you already know where you need to make bubbles because on this next row we will make bubble between two bubbles here we will make one here here and here and so on until the end of the row and on row 74 we are actually repeating the first row of the bubble uh, no sorry the second row of the bubbles so we are starting with knit two and then we are making a bubble work five stitches in the next stitch then turn the work purl these five stitches remember to make them a little bit loose it will be more easy for you to catch all the stitches together because now we are knitting these five stitches together through the back push the bubble in the front pull this new stitch and then work five knit stitches so this will be the repeat for this row one bubble turn the work row these five stitches turn the work now knit these five stitches together through the back loop push the bubble in the front and knit the next five stitches you will <clears throat> you will end the row with knit three stitches and I will come back for the next row row 74 is complete the next five rows we are working in stockinette stitch but the next one is very very important always uh, on the row next the bubble row don't forget to pick up this loop here and knit together this loop with the bubble stitch this way you are avoiding uh, have gaps next to your bubble and also this way you make sure the bubble uh, is fixed on the front side of your work because if you are turning the work like this you can see where the bubbles are but no chance to uh, find the bubble on the back of your work 
So as I said, this is row 75, um, where you need and pick up that loop next to the bubble. Uh, on row 76, you will need 77 knit, 78 knit, 79 knit, and I will come back for row 80. So the next five rows, you are just knitting in round. Okay, so row 79 is complete for me. Now I need to measure my work and to show you how many centimeters I have so far. So I will measure like this. So from here to here, not here. So like this, as you can see, I have 25 centimeters. We need to work at least um, another five centimeters long. And then I can show you the next step where we are separating uh, the front stitches from the uh, back stitches and we are making some decrease, uh, decreasing rows for this uh, bloomer part of our romper. Okay, so as I said, I have 79 stitches. Next, only because I want to uh, save at least 10, maybe 15 mi minutes for this tutorial, uh, which is already very long. Next, you will work another bubble repeat. Remember, a bubble repeat is actually 12 rows one row one bubble row five knit rows another bubble row another five knit uh, rows so one repeat means 12 rows i will come back once i have my repeat complete so in total after uh, this repeat you will have nineteen one rows ninety one rows okay so i will come back with you once I make my other repeat of 12 rows and you always see the previous bubble row because you always are working in a bubble row you always are, are working a bubble between uh, two bubbles so see you after this repeat. Okay guys, so I finished my repeat. Uh, I finished row 91 and I want to show you how my, um, what my work is measuring until now. So I have almost 30 centimeters long. 
I think this will be approximately 11.78 inches. Actually, I have a couple of stitches to work to complete row 91. Then on row 92, we are working another, bub another uh, bubble row. Then on row um, 93, we will separate the stitches and uh, we will continue to work the front of the romper. So now I am on row 92 and I need to work a bubble row. So I am starting row 92 with knit 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I will make my bubble. So I will come back once I complete uh, row 92. And we will continue to work the next part. So on this row, you repeat, knit five, make a bubble, knit five, make a bubble. Okay? Okay, so I finished a row 92. And let me show you, I will take the marker a little bit. So this is how the work looks so far. I'm sure yours is the same. Now we have in total on this part 102 stitches. So we will divide this way. We will have 52 stitches for the back and 50 on the front and we will work like this so this is the back we have 26 here and 26 here and here 50 and I will place again the marker here in case uh, I want to make sure that I am counting uh, and working uh, the correct number of stitches. So next we are uh, working normally uh, 26 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. Don't forget to take this loop and work together with the bubble stitch. So I have six until now. Um, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. This is half of my back stitches, back part of the romper. Now, next, I will 
cast off nine stitches. Be careful and uh, not um, cast on the stitch. Uh, uh, sorry, I am not casting on. I am casting off nine stitches. So we need to cast off loosely, not very tight. Okay, so nine stitches. I will go for uh, the cast off through the back of the stitches. This is something I always, almost always uh, do, but you can cast off um, how you prefer most. Okay, so I have one stitch, two, now pick up this loop and work the three together so three four five Six, seven, eight, and nine. You can see them here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I will work thirty one stitches, and with this one, I will have thirty two. So I have already one stitch and continue. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. Okay, next we will cast off another nine stitches so one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine. Now we should knit the last twenty five stitches. So we should have here twenty five plus this one. We should have twenty six. Let's see. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 5. Okay, so I have one here and until the stitch marker I need to have another 25. So another half of the back. So I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and my last stitch, 26. Now, I will take off the marker because I don't need it anymore. And the next step, is to oh my God, let me find my scissor because we need to um, cast all uh, to cut the yarn just a second we will continue to work but this time we will work back and forth in uh, stocking and stitch as we did on this part and uh, of course, we've already made um, one row, uh, one bubble row, then we've made one uh, neat row. Uh, between two rows of bubbles, you know that we will have five neat rows or five rows in stockinette stitch in our case since we will work flat. But we will start uh, right now uh, also on the front side the next row because um, otherwise uh, the row where we need to make bubble will be on the back side so this is the only reason I will take my yarn I will attach leaving this uh, tail and I will start to work this row uh, this is row 94 and after the first two uh, stitches I am making two knots and now I am wrapping for a couple of stitches this uh, little tail okay so this is row as I said 94 I know I am repeating myself a lot but just because I don't want to uh, forget where I am Okay, so this is my uh, my baby, my dog, who is playing. Maybe you can hear some background noises. Okay, so continue to knit this row. I am almost at the end of my row. Now we will turn the work and start to work row uh, 95. I still have yarn from my second skin. On row 95 we will start to decrease we will decrease 
two stitches at the beginning of every row. So I am first purling two stitches together and again two stitches together. So I just decrease two stitches. Now I continue to purl until the end of the row. He wants to play. If your baby wants to play. Okay, so I finished row 95, turn the work. Row 96 is a net row, but first we need to uh, cast off two stitches. So one, two, and then continue to work until the end of the row. After row um, 96, this is row 96, yes, uh, we have 28 stitches. I hope I'm not making too mis many mistakes because I really want you to have this step-by-step uh, -step very clear so you can work your own uh, romper. Row 97, again we are, uh, cast we need to cast off two stitches. So one, two, and then continue to purl until the end of the row. After row 97, this row that we are purling, you should have 26 stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 4, 6, yes, 26 stitches. Turn the work, row 98. First, we are um, casting off two stitches. So one, two. Now you have 24 stitches. Then also we need to make bubbles. So knit the next four stitches, one, two, three, four, and in the next stitch we are working a bubble. Turn the work, purl this five stitches of the bubble. Turn the work, and knit together these five stitches through the back and this is our bubble then knit the next five stitches and make another bubble turn the work 
purl these five stitches turn the work and knit together these five stitches through the back then knit five and work the last bubble of row 98 the work again turn the work and work this five stitches together through the back loop and then knit the rest of the stitches The rest of the stitches meaning six stitches turn the work we need to cast off two stitches so I'm purling together the first two stitches and again purl together two stitches and then work in purl stitch until the end of the row I think now you should have this is row 99 you should have 22 stitches let's see 2 4 6 8 9 10 12 14 16 18 20 22 yes we have 22 stitches so continue to purl row 100 we've reached row 100 again cast off two stitches so one two and then we will knit the rest of the stitches but we need to uh, don't forget to take this loop here pull like this and knit together with the stitch of the bubble Like this okay so now we have 20 stitches let me show you how the work look Okay. Like this. Okay. Now we continue with row one hundred and one. And again, I will place this inside. Um, again, uh, let me think. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. I don't want to make to wide this part between the legs because we will have also the ribbing part um, we will make uh, 
again a cast of two stitches so one two and continue to purl now you have 18 stitches now turn the work and first cast off the last two stitches this is the last cast off for this part and now on row we are on row 102 we should count 16 stitches let's see two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen so this is row this was row 102 turn the work on the next row 103 we are purling all the stitches we are not decreasing anymore next row 104 is a bubble row so we are only making two bubbles here and here I guess you can see them so we are first knitting four stitches so one two three four then we are making a bubble now knit the next five stitches make another bubble turn the work And the last bubble then work in knit stitch the last five stitches and this was row uh, 104 on row 105 we are purling all the stitches On row 106 we are knitting the stitches and don't forget to pull up the loop next to the bubble and work together with the stitch bubble so this is row 106 
this is row 107 and then I want to measure my work after this row let's see see how beautiful is uh, until now the shape at least I think it's beautiful <laughs> I will see what you are thinking after you are will work this outfit okay so from here to here i have almost 35 centimeters long and i will work two more rows so i will knit row 108 I will purl the row 109 and even if i said only two rows i will make an extra row 110 only because this is the row that i will uh, knit together at some point with the back part and um, i will show you at the time i don't want the um, the row where we are uh, knitting together the two parts i don't want to be up here in the front just just a little bit like this you will be just a little bit okay guys so this is the front part of the bloomers for this romper the bloomer part now i will cut a yarn i am leaving a short tail and i will leave my stitches uh, like this i hope it won't bothers me while working um, the next part I need another uh, double point needle so I will come back and work the back part and let's start to work uh, the other part again we are attaching the yarn leaving a tail I will also work with double pointed needles. After the first two stitches, I am making a knot and then I will wrap this tail around my main yarn for a couple of stitches. Like this I think it is enough I will leave this tail on the back of my work and I will continue to knit 
until I reach half of the stitches because I have another tail that I need to secure. I'm almost there. You can see here on the back of my work. So this is my tail. I will work the next stitch. I take this and again making two knots because I need to secure the stitch. And then I will wrap this tail to for a couple of stitches. I am not the only one who has this <laughs> leftover tail, you too will have, so you need to secure that. Okay, I think I work my stitches very tight, I don't know why, on this row. Okay, so continue. to work row 94 okay turn your work On row 95 you will purl all the stitches okay and I will come back for the next row row 96 we need to cast off two stitches so one two and then we continue to knit until the end of the row. After this row, you should have 50 stitches. Okay, so continue to knit this row. Row 97, we need to first cast off two stitches. So one, two, then we continue to purl all the stitches on this row. I finish row 97 after uh, this row you should count 48 stitches let's start with row 98 first we need to cast off two stitches and then um, we are making uh, we are knitting actually two four one second so two four five stitches okay so knit five stitches one two three four five and in the next one we are making a bubble so this row 98 is a bubble row and continue to work this bubble row you will end the row with 
one bubble and knit three. Okay, so this will be your last bubble here on this stitch and then knit the last three stitches. I finished row 48 and uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, 98. And uh, after this row, you should count 46 stitches. Row 99, we start by casting off two stitches. So one and two. And then we will purl the rest of the stitches. Okay, we are about to start the row 100. And of course, we are starting with uh, cast off two stitches. And then we will continue to knit on row 100. And don't forget to pick up this loop and knit together with this bubble stitch. So continue to work row 100. Row 100 is complete. After this row, you should count uh, 42 stitches. 101, cast off two stitches, and then continue to purl all the stitches on this row, 101. I finish row 101. After this row, you should count uh, 40 stitches. 102. We start with cast off two stitches and then we continue to knit until the end of the row and after this row you should count um, 38 stitches. Before I start with row 103 I want to show you how my work looks so far. As you can see the, the back part is wider than the front and this is how uh, we um, this is how it's supposed to be okay so um, now let's continue with a row 103 we start with cast off two stitches and then purl until the end of the row row 104 we are starting with uh, cast off two stitches and this is a bubble row so knit the next two stitches and then work the bubble in the next stitch like this next 
knit 5 stitches and then work bubble in the next you will end the row with one bubble and knit the last six stitches see here you will have a bubble in this stitch and then knit the last six stitches row 105 start with the cast off two stitches and then purl the rest of the stitches okay guys so I finished row 105 and we are about to start row 106 and this time we start with cast off four stitches now we have 32 stitches okay after row 105 and we will cast off four stitches so one two I will pick up again this loop and cast off together this three through the back so three and four and then we will continue to knit until the end of the row and don't forget to pick up this loop here next to the bubble and work together with the bubble stitch. I've done row 106. After this row, you should count 28 stitches. Next, turn the work and on row 107, we start with cast off four stitches. So one, two, three and four and then continue to purl until the end of the row and you will count 24 stitches after finishing this row row 108 again we cast off four stitches and then we knit until the end of the row and after this row you should count 20 stitches okay let's count together so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 stitches. Turn the work and this is the last row. Again, cast off 4 stitches. This is row 109. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and continue to purl you now have 16 stitches exactly um, how we have here on the front part okay now after this row we will join together the parts the two parts let's count again so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 
and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. What we are going to do next is to turn the romper on the wrong side like this okay and now we will work together these stitches we will uh, cast off together the stitches from the two needles so we are uh, casting off in purl stitch so pick up the stitch from the needle uh, the back needle and the stitch from the front needle and purl them together now drop the two stitches pick up the loop you have here from the front part and make a knot and then make a double knot you need to secure the stitches this way from the front part and we continue I have one stitch on my right needle and now I will pick up the back stitch and the front stitch, purl them together and then pass over the first stitch over the next one. Again, pick up the back stitch, the front stitch Curl them together, pass over the stitch, pick up the back stitch, the front stitch, purl them together and pass over this stitch over the next one. Again, pick up the two stitches, purl them together and pass over this stitch and this is how we continue to work until we cast off all the stitches okay again the two stitches together and purl them pass over this two stitches Curl them together and pass over the stitch over the next one. Just a couple of stitches more and we will finish this part. And my last now cut the yarn leaving short tail so we can wave in and pull the tail through this loop and pull tight okay now turn your work on the front side so you can see what we have done so far and ta-da this is how our Oliver romper look so far so this is how it should look, should look the back part needs to be wider than the front part okay let me show you I am 
I'm so happy that I managed to work this tutorial because this is very very nice to knit and I don't think it is so hard the next part is to work the opening legs in rib one by one so I will turn my work like this and I will start with the right opening leg I will place it like here and I will uh, use the double pointed needles three double pointed needles and I will start to pick up stitches for our opening leg and at the same time we will work the first row so leave a short tail and start to pick up the stitches this is my first stitch we need at least 50 stitches okay so i just pick up the first stitch and knit the first stitch then pick up here the next one and it will be a purl stitch this one continue this is a knit stitch the next one then again pick up these two together and make a purl stitch I have four stitches until now stitch number five is a knit stitch the stitch number six is a purl stitch stitch number seven is a knit stitch number eight is a purl stitch I have here this gap and I will pick up like this because I don't want to have a gap so two four six eight this is number nine is a knit stitch you see then I will pick up here number 10 is a purl stitch then the next one is a knit stitch this is I think 11 12 is a purl stitch 13 is a knit stitch see then I will see here we have a gap and we don't want a gap and I will pick up like this so a purl stitch then I will pick up here oh sorry this is a knit stitch the next one is a purl stitch let's see how many stitches we have until now I forgot so 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 we continue so this is my stitch 17 a knit stitch 18 is a purl stitch 19 is a knit stitch 20 is a purl stitch I am here 21 is a knit stitch 
22 is a purl stitch. 23 is an eight stitch. 24 is a purl stitch. 25 is an eight stitch. 26 is a purl stitch. 27 knit and my 28 is a pearl so in that case we will have in total 56 stitches as I told you you need at least 50 stitches we will have 56 which is very uh, good because we need the opening leg to be a stretchy one okay and now we will pick another oh pick up another 28 stitches from this part so we need to start with a knit stitch so one Two, three, four, This is five, five, and then here I have a gap and I don't want to have a gap, so I will pick up like this and I will make a purl stitch then a knit stitch so I have two four six seven let's see this is stitch number eight nine Just a second, okay. So two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Mm -hmm. Here I have a gap and I don't like it. So this is eleven, and this is twelve. Let's see, this will be thirteen. Oh, sorry. Okay, this will be fourteen. Fifteen. Let's see. Hmm. I think I will pick up here. I forgot how many stitches I have. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Okay, so we need ten stitches more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four, five, six, see, I am here, six, seven, eight, nine, and my last stitch I will pick up here. I know this part was long with picking up, oh sorry, the stitches, but if you, my dear friend, are a beginner, you are a beginner, I want you to see exactly um, how to work. So this is the reason I am making this moment so long. <laughs> okay, now I am making here a double knot. I will place this inside of my work. So this was a row one. The setup row is row one. Now all you need to do is to work, oh sorry, another six rows. So in total we will have seven rows in rib one by one. And I will come back once I have my seven rows. I just realized I've made a mistake. Uh, I pick up, I have, I had picked up 28 stitches on the front side and 26 on the back part size, uh, side. So in total, I have 54 stitches. I'm sorry, uh, I give you <laughs> the wrong number of stitches. Okay, so I have 28 here and 26 uh, uh, here on the second needle. So 54 in total. In case you have 56 stitches in total, so 28 here to 28 here, it's perfect. So it's not a problem. Uh, the important thing is to have at least 50 stitches, okay? If you have 52, 54, 56, it is okay. I've done, <clears throat> sorry, I've done uh, my seven uh, rows of one by one ribbing. And now it's time to cast off the stitches and uh, we need to cast off loosely okay so be careful here because we need stretchiness at each opening leg So I will cast off as you can see in also in rib one by one. Okay, so continue to cast off the stitches. I finished my cast off. I will cut the yarn leaving 
a tail. I will show you how my work looks so far. Okay, so what a difference, isn't it? What a difference with this uh, part of one by one ribbing. Next, you will work the same way the second opening leg because I had uh, here 54 stitches in total I will pick up here too the same number of stitches so of you uh, pick up the number of stitches as you did for the first opening leg and after uh, working the second opening leg we will work the sleeves and at the end we will work the collar of course the collar is optional if you want to work the collar if not you can finish the sleeves and leave it like this this is your option okay so i will come back once i have my second opening leg done and i will continue with the sleeve also i want to show you this is the yarn i uh, have for from my uh, second skin of yarn so i think i will uh, start another one because I don't want to uh, in case I will uh, not uh, finish the second opening leg with this one I don't want to make uh, a knot to attach um, another skin uh, at this part so it's better if I will start the third skin for this romper. See you! I've made my second opening leg. I waved in ends so I don't have any remaining tail. And now we are ready to start with the first sleeve. I will start with the left one remember that we are working short sleeves so first i will place onto a double pointed needle first i will place we have 33 stitches in total i will place on my first double pointed needle 16 stitches Then I will place the remaining 17 stitches onto the second double pointed needle. Now I can pull this scrap yarn okay now I will turn the work again and I will pick up another stitch here so now I have 17 and 17 then I pick the third double pointed needle and I will pick three stitches 
from the underarm. One, two, and this will be three. And place them on the first double pointed needle. So now I have 20 here and I will do the same here. I will pick up three stitches and place them here. So now I have in total 40 stitches. I have 20 here and 20 here. We um, now need to work in stockinette stitch. We've made a bubble row and after the bubble row from the sleeve we have one knit row. So we need another four uh, knit rows. I take my yarn. I leave a tail and I start to knit the first row. After the first two stitches make a knot, take another one, leave this aside and then I will continue to knit until I reach my bubble and here I will pick up this stitch, this loop and work together with my bubble. Again, pick up this stitch and work together with the bubble. Turn the work. And continue to work until the next bubble. Pick up the loop work together with this bubble stitch pick up the loop work with the bubble and continue to knit all the stitches until the end of the row, this first row. I will count the rows from one, from the underarm part. Now make a knot, pull tight here, now make a double knot, well, at least I am making a double knot, and place this tail inside of your sleeve. So now we have two knit rows after the bubble row. Next, I will continue to knit another three rows in knit stitch in round and after these three rows I will come back and work the next row with you. So far I knitted 
four rows. This is how it look in the underarm part. Now, row five is a bubble row. Of course, we have 40 stitches. We don't have <clears throat> a multiple of six, but it's okay. And now, I will work the first two stitches in knit stitch. Let me count two, one, two, four, five, one. Okay, so first knit two stitches and then in the next stitch we are making a bubble. It's a little tricky to work with double pointed needles if you uh, don't have experience. So uh, use whatever type of needle you are um, used to. Okay, so this is my first bubble. Next, knit five stitches, two, three, four, and five. In the next stitch, make a bubble. Turn the work. Purl these five stitches. Turn the work. And knit these five stitches together through the back loop. Oops. work the next five stitches two three four five and in the next stitch make a bubble lose my stitches knit the next five stitches and I've done half of the sleeve turn the work in the first stitch, we are making a bubble. The first stitch from the second double pointed needle. Okay. 
work the next five stitches one two three four five in the next stitch make a bubble work the next five stitches and make another bubble And work the last seven stitches. I am not making another bubble. You see? Of course, you can make another bubble uh, here if you want, but I won't. So this was row uh, five. The next five rows we are working in knit stitch. But in this first row after the bubble row, don't forget to pick up the loop before the bubble. this <coughs> to close the gap so right now I am working row six after this row I need to work four more rows in total from the underarm I will have ten rows And I will come back with you once I have my 10 rows complete. So, just a reminder, row 1, 2, 3, 4 was neat rows, row 5 was the bubble row, row 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 will be also knitting rows in knit stitch. I finish row 10. Now on my sleeves I don't want uh, to work again uh, one by one ribbing so I will work a double hem but first on row 11 I need to work a purl row <clears throat> okay so row 11 purl all the stitches
Okay, so row 11 is complete. Now I will change my needles. I will pick up um, my three uh, millimeter double pointed needles or US uh, 2.5 and I will uh, continue to work another three rows in knit stitch but using the smaller needle so row 12 is a knit row row um, 13 will be also a knit row and row 14 a knit row so another three knit rows but using US 2.5 needles or three millimeter. Okay, so this is row 12 for me. And I will continue to work another two rows. With my smaller needles. And I will come back once I have my two rows complete. My other two rows in knit stitch are complete. So in total I have 14 rows. Row 15 is the cast off row, so be careful to cast off loosely. All the stitches until the end of the row. So do not cast off tight. Okay, I will come back once I uh, finish the cast off. My cast off is complete. I need to leave a tail because we need to fold and sew. I will show you right away. Now turn the work on the wrong side. First, we need to wave this tail from the underarm part. this <clears throat> and now <clears throat> I will take this tail from my cast off and I will work like this fold like this and start to sew your double hem so one stitch from the cast off 
and one bump purl down we go top down um, bottom up like this we don't need to pull the yarn tight Okay, bottom up. Top down. Bottom up. Top down is very easy to do and uh, I know it's extra work but uh, this way your sleeve will have a beautiful finishing uh, look okay so top down bottom up top down bottom up I guess you can see what I am doing here and I will come back once I sew my um, my hem until the end and show you how it look on the front side so I am at my last stage and now I will try to hide to secure first this tail I am waving back through the stitches Just a little bit and now I can cut the yarn, turn the work and this my friends is the first sleeve. You already saw that I didn't decrease any stitch, I didn't want to decrease any stitch because I like the look of this sleeve you see and we will work now the second sleeve I will only show you how to uh, pick up stitches on the second sleeve and um, explain you the next step The left sleeve take your three point five double pointed needles and first pick up seventeen stitches this time two four six eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fifteen 17 then turn and pick up the rest the remaining stitches 16 pull the scrap yarn now here we have 17 here we have 16 pick up here to have 17 stitches too on the second double pointed needle and then make sure to pick up um, three stitches one 
two and three. So now I have 20 stitches on the first double pointed needle and I need three more here. One, two, and three. First step, of course, is to work the first four rows in knit stitch river tail. But also to pick up on this first row, to pick up the loop next to the bubble and work together with the bubble stitch. I know I am repeating this very often, but it is important. So after the first two stitches, I am making two knots, leave aside, and now continue to work your stitches until you reach the bubble. Then pick up this loop and work together with your bubble stitch. Okay, like this. Turn the work. And do exactly the same. Pick up the stitch next, the loop next to the bubble and work together with the bubble stitch like this. Then continue to work the stitches until the end of the row. Remember this is row one. After row one we are again making a knot, we are tying the tail together with the main yarn. So once and for the second I will make a double knot. Now you can leave this inside of your sleeve of your work and now continue to knit row two, three, and four. My four rows are complete. On row five, we are working bubbles and we need to match this part. So <clears throat> on row five, we are starting with, <clears throat> sorry, knit seven stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the next stitch, we are making a bubble. Next, knit five stitches. And in the next stitch, you are making a bubble. You will end the row with Oh, I forgot. Just a second. So you will end the row with one bubble. And 
and knit the last two stitches. So this was row five. Let's see again. So on row five, we start with uh, knit seven stitches, make one bubble, knit five, make one bubble, knit five, make one bubble. And then on the next double pointed needle, knit five, one bubble, knit five, one bubble, knit five, one bubble, knit two. So this was row five. The next five rows we are knitting. Don't forget to uh, pick up the loop next to the bubble on the next row. After those, um, after the next five uh, rows in knit stitch, you will have 10 rows worked. So then on row 11, you are purling. Then rows uh, 12, 13, 14, you are working in knit stitch, but those last three rows we are working with small double pointed needles, exactly how we did for the first sleeve. And then on row 15, we will cast off. I will come back once I reach my cast off. I just finished my cast off for the second sleeve. I will cut the yarn. I still have yarn left from the third skin of yarn. Okay, now, of course, again, we need to turn the work on the wrong side and hide or wave the tail from the start of our slave in the underarm part like I showed you showed, showed you I don't know if it is correct to say uh, at the other sleeve okay I want to close here I have this little gap here and I want to wave a little bit here like this And then I will proceed to sew my double hem. And I will come back to show you how my work look. And then continue with um, the last step of this second part of this romper. So I will come back once I sew my second double hem. My second sleeve is ready. So this is how the romper look the next step is to work the color of course uh, as i said before if you don't want to work that color you can leave uh, this romper exactly the same or uh, let's say if you are making uh, for a boy and you don't want the color, you can leave it like this for boys. 
if you are making for a little girl and you like that color detail you can work the color so uh, also here at um, the sleeves uh, you don't need to work this double hem if you don't like you can work um, in one by one rib or if you don't want one by one rib here at the opening legs you of course can work double hem so it all can be changed and uh, you can modify this pattern however you want however you like more this is just your base let's say the base of the part pattern and you change uh, on how you prefer most but I will work the color for the color I will use straight needles these are also uh, zinc needles same number 3.5 millimeter or US 4 and we will start turn the work like this this is the back of the romper I will start from here this corner with uh, the button holes and if you remember at the beginning after the one by one rib and before to start to work the raglan we've made this row in pearl stitches and this is what this row these pearl stitches um, will be a great great help for us to start the color first of all for the color uh, for a great color <laughs> uh, let's say you need at least double the stitches from the neckline this way your color uh, will be wide and will be um, sit back sit uh, beautiful on the shoulder and let me show you how we are doing this I don't know if I uh, explain correctly but I do hope you understand what um, I meant to say so what we are gonna do now so this is a pearl stitch a pearl stitch a pearl stitch but I will work like this first I will insert in this bump here I will leave a tail and work a knit stitch then I will insert here and pick up another stitch make a knot here another one and then start as you can see I will pick up all these loops that I see and this way I will almost double the stitches I mean this is the bump from the pearl stitch okay so I will pick up all these loops here and I will count the stitches to see how many I will pick up and work so two four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, see? So I have 28, I will continue. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, I have 40 stitches until now and I just uh, passed the first sleeve as you can see see now I will start to pick up the stitches from the chest part so remember we have 40 stitches and continue to pick up stitches so 41 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so I have 50 1 2 3 4 so you are picking up all this bump you have one down one up one down one up okay uh, I forgot I forgot how many stitches I have okay so I have 54 let's continue 55 56 57 58 59 60 so you see I am at the health of my chest part as you can see and I have 60 stitches continue to pick up 
the stitches and I will come back and um, tell you how many number of stitches I have. So I finished to pick up the stitches and work the stitches the first row for the collar and I have 125 stitches. Now before we continue as you can see for uh, this romper I choose to make the collar in the same color only because I am not feeling very inspired and I don't know what other color should work with this peach salmon pink I don't know exactly what color oh it's coral okay so initially I thought to make the color in white but I don't know why I can't see white uh, matching very well with this uh, coral color so in case you want to make the color in a different color you just need to choose a color that will match with the rest of the romper and now let's proceed with row two so as I said I have 125 stitches but I want for my color to have 130 stitches so you divide these 125 stitches to five because we need five more stitches and it will result 25 stitches which means that we will increase five times on every 25 stitch and now we are on the pearl side because the color we will work in stockinette stitch so first I need to pearl 24 stitches so two three four five six seven eight nine ten continue until twenty four Let's count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24. Now, the next stitch, stitch 25, we will purl back and forth. And this way we will increase one stitch. So first purl the stitch normally. Do not drop the stitch from your left needle go like this and make another purl stitch in the same stitch okay next continue to purl another 24 stitches
okay and I purled 24 stitches and in the next stitch the stitch 25 again I will purl back and forth this stitch and this way I will increase another stitch okay again purl 24 Okay, I purled 24 and in the next stitch purl the stitch back and forth. I've made the third increase. I still need to make two increases. So I should have here 50 stitches, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 30, 2, 4, 6, 8, 40, 2, 4, 6, 8, 50. Okay, so you continue to purl 24 stitches in the next one, purl the stitch back and forth, and purl another 24 stitches, and the last increase is in the last stitch. So the last stitch, you will um, work the stitch back and forth as I show you. After this second row of the collar, you should have 130 stitches. Okay, a row three of the collar is a bubble row. And we start with knit five stitches. And in the next stitch, we are working a bubble exactly how we did for the rest of the romper. Okay. And this is how you work this row. Knit five stitches and in the next stitch you are working the bubble. I will come back once I reach my last four five stitches. I almost finish row three and on row three you are finishing the row with one bubble and then knit the last four stitches and this was row three of the collar the next five rows of course we are working in stockinet stitch and because I am on the wrong side of my work, I will start with a purl row. But don't forget that on the next row, on the front side of your work, you need to pick up that loop before the bubble and work together with the stitch bubble. Okay, so I will see you once I complete my five rows in stockinet stitch and in total I will work eight rows from the first row. I finished my uh, five rows in stockinet stitch and uh, in total as i said i have eight work uh, rows worked until now 
and I am about to start row nine and the row nine is a bubble row maybe I should mention that for this color we will work three rows of bubbles because it's a short sleeve romper and I think three rows of bubbles for this color is enough okay so let's start row nine first we need to knit eight stitches and then in the next stitch we are working a bubble it's a little harder because we have many stitches on our needles but anyway they are only a couple of rows more to knit and then uh, we finished so knit eight rows uh, eight stitches sorry in the next stitch make a bubble and then work five stitches and in the next stitch make a bubble And this is what you are going to repeat on this row make a bubble knit five make a bubble the only difference is at the end at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row but um, the repeat is the same make a bubble knit five so two four five you should end the row with one bubble and seven knit stitches this is how you end the row one bubble and knit the last seven uh, stitches and i will come back once my row is complete row nine is complete as I said, you will finish with a bubble and seven knit stitches. Next, we need to work again five rows in stockinette stitch. And because I am on the wrong side of my work, of course, my first row is a purl row. Then when you reach the the right side of your work don't forget to pick up the loop before your bubble and work together that loop with the bubble stitch and i will come back once i have another um five rows worked in stockinette stitch i finished my um five rows in stockinette stitch and now i have 14 rows in total row 15 that we are going to start right now is a bubble row and it is a repeat of the first bubble row so if you remember we are working first five stitches we are knitting the first uh, five stitches three four five and then we are making a bubble and this is what you are going to repeat on row 15 
knit five, make a bubble, knit five, make a bubble, and you will end the row with one bubble and four knit stitches. Okay. And after this bubble row, this row 15, you will work the next four rows in stockinette stitch. So again, this is row 15, which is a bubble row. Then row 16, you are purling all the stitches. Row 17, knit all the stitches and be careful because on row 17, you need to pick up the loop, okay, next to the bubble and work together with the bubble stitch. Then row 18 is a purl row, row 19 is a knit row and I will come back once um, I reach row 20, uh, 20 yes, which is the last row which is the cast off row, but also is the row where we will cast off in the picot stitch. And this way we will give a beautiful finished look to this color. So I see you on row 20. And I finished my rows. Um, I finished row 19. I have my four stockinette stitch rows. And we are about to work the last row, the cast off picot row. And I choose to work on the back side because uh, it will curl less than if you are working uh, this um, last row on the front side. At least this is <laughs> my opinion. Of course, you can uh, choose to end your color in whatever side of your work decide. First, I will work um, another important thing. We are um, making the cast off in knit stitch. Okay, so we are not purling. Uh, we are not um, making the cast off using the purl stitch. First, in the first stitch, I will work three stitches like this. So I have one and I place the stitch on my left needle. I make another stitch and I place these two on my left needle. Oh, sorry. I just lost my stitches. Let's do it again. So, in the first stitch, I am making a stitch and place this stitch on my left needle. I am knitting another stitch, which I am also placing on my left needle. You see? I have three. Now, I knit the first one, I knit the second one, then I play, I pass over this stitch over the next one, knit the next one, pass over the stitch over the next one. And again, I have one stitch, but also a picot. 
Next, we are casting off five stitches. So one, two, three, cast off loosely, not too tight, five. See? Then I place this stitch again on my left needle and I start again. I am knitting one stitch and place on the left needle. I am knitting another stitch and place on my left needle. I have three again. Then knit the first knit the second, pass over the first over the next one, knit the third and pass over the stitch over the next one. And I've made another picot stitch. Now again cast off five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, sorry. You see? Now, place this stitch onto your left needle and again knit one stitch, do not drop this and place the new stitch also on your left needle. You just twist a little bit like this. Okay, now knit another one and place it on your left needle. Okay, so we now have again three stitches and start again to knit the first, knit the second, pass over the first stitch over the next one, knit the third and pass over the stitch over the next one. So my son just brought me the laptop to download <laughs> the tutorial and to edit. So yeah. Okay. Let's continue. I have now three picot stitches separated by five cast off stitches. Okay, so um, now we continue to work like this. I will make another repeat. So cast off five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Now place the stitch again on your left needle. Knit one stitch place on your left needle. Knit another one and place it on your left needle. So we basically um, make three stitches in one stitch. We are increasing. And again, knit the first, knit the second one, pass over the first or the second one, knit the third stitch and pass over and we've made another picot stitch. 
oops it will look very nice at the end what i am doing i will pick another needle because it's hard to work with two uh, long straight needles and now cast off again five stitches so one two three four and five place this stitch onto your left needle and now make three stitches in one stitch so one after making the first place it on the left needle and make another and place it also on your left needle now knit the first one knit the second one pass over this over the next one knit the last and pass over and continue to cast off five stitches again one two three four five You see, it's a very a nice way to finish your collar and it will look very beautiful at the end. Let's make another picot stitch together and then I will leave you to work your last row. So place the stitch onto your left needle knit one stitch in the same stitch and place it on your left needle and knit the third the second one and place it on your left needle and then knit the first one knit the second one pass over the first over the next one oops and knit the last stitch and pass over and then continue to cast off five stitches one two three four five and repeat again you are making um, picot stitches. I will see you at the end of my row. I'm almost at the end of my row. I have on my left um, needle a uh, needle uh, five stitches and on my right needle one stitch. Now I need to make another picot. Then I need to cast off five stitches, one, the last five stitches, two, three, four, five, and here I will make my last picot stitch. So we've started with a picot stitch, we are ending the row with a picot stitch. I will count them right away for you to see how many I have. One second, I will cut the yarn here and leave a little tail. And now let's count the picot stitches so I have two four six eight 
10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27 picot stitches and they are separated by five uh, cast off stitches. My friends, this is our Oliver romper. Now I need to wave these tails. I will steam block this part here, the button holes, and the collar like this on the back side only this part. I will sew the buttons and I will come back to show you the final uh, result. And here it is my friends, the Oliver bubble romper for 12 months until 18 months but it all depends on the baby some babies are uh, taller um, but if you are working for your own baby you can always adjust the pattern and see this is why i said that for the collar part we need at least double the, the stitches okay so if you have the chance to um, make it for um, 18 24 months old you definitely will have a bigger uh, collar uh, or better said you will have you will need more stitches for your collar and if you want you can work an eye cord and um, place it here on the waist band and uh, I know it's not easy to do it because um, it's hard enough to work bubbles and um, this yarn uh, let's say it's not my favorite for uh, bubble knitting uh, of course you can make the bubble um, smaller uh, we've made five stitches in one stitch but you can make three you can make four this is uh, something uh, you need to decide uh, let me show you the back so this is the back uh, now I am very sorry that I have I've made this first buttonhole um, maybe I should uh, made this button first buttonhole uh, down a little bit because uh, you see how um, it look here on the back but of course when the baby is wearing this it will look uh, different so in case you want uh, to be wider so um, let me give you some measurements so from the neckline I will show you like this uh, from the neckline okay to here you have uh, 35 centimeters long here you have 44 
um, in total and here you have 50 in total here you have almost 11 centimeters but if you want to be wider you need to continue to increase another two rows of increase this way you will have an extra 12 stitches and then after the waistband you can also increase more stitches but this is something you need to decide of course the romper uh, it is stretchy but remember that um, I've made this pattern for photo sessions so the babies at the session uh, didn't wear anything else underneath this romper maybe the diaper uh, only the diaper so they didn't have another uh, other uh, clothes uh, underneath this romper so um, that's why uh, in case you uh, want to make it for your own baby you have um, two choices you can make it uh, from cotton there is very good organic cotton and you can um, uh, dress the baby in the summer with this romper or you can continue to increase a little bit more so uh, this way you will have more stitches and you will gain um, a little bit uh, um, a couple of centimeters in wide at least four centimeters you will gain if you have 12 stitches uh, plus 12 stitches but this is uh, the version is a little bit different from uh, the one you can see in the picture uh, but this is a, a more <laughs> a better version okay this i've made an adjustment to this pattern and i like it more like this and i really hope you too will enjoy knitting this for your baby uh, as a present for um, another baby uh, i think this is uh, something really really uh, great to make uh, for your child in case you like this tutorial please feel free to share to like and subscribe for more and more and more tutorials uh, where we will make uh, sweet garments for the little ones Thank you very much for watching as always you know that if you have a problem working this outfit uh, don't hesitate to message me you can find me on instagram as little needs um, i have the same profile uh, image as here on the channel so it won't be hard to find me and uh, my friends this was part two of Oliver's set I will come back I hope in one week with the last part part three where I will work a pixie bonnet that will match this uh, cute romper until then, please uh, stay safe and um, happy knitting. Bye-bye.